Welcome back to the Tuesday edition of Good Morning Antigua Barbuda. Here's hoping you're having a great day. You're on your way to work. Navigate yourself carefully out there. As we say, a very special good morning to His Excellency, the Deputy Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, Sir Clear Roberts. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well. Well, we're glad you could join us this morning. And of course, uh, your daughter, uh, Sophia. 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 Sophia, Sophia. Roberts. <laughs> Sophia Roberts, attorney at law. Yes. How are you? I'm great. Thank well, you. we're glad to have you folks in our company. It's very topical these days, the death penalty. It has been for a while, or more so for the past week. I've been hearing a whole lot about it. And yesterday there was a topic on the radio and folks were weighing in and some uh, well-known crafted attorneys were also on the program. The death penalty, there's a public lecture that comes up on Saturday. Uh, so, so clear, tell us about the public lecture and the, what you're hoping to achieve. Good. Uh, Dave, thank you for having us. On Saturday, uh, October the 4th, at Heritage Key Hotel at 7 o'clock in the evening. We're having a special public lecture on the death penalty. And we are inviting persons who believe in the death penalty and persons who are against the death penalty. It's a program to educate, to discuss the death penalty. Uh, we're having an international, well-renowned international ab abolitionist who his name is Ron Benny Cushing. Benny Cushing. Benny Cushing. Benny Cushing. Yes. He's a representative of New Hampshire in the USA. He's actually a, a politician. Uh, we're also having a victim, Juan Melendez, who spent 17 years on death row, uh, only to discover that he was, in fact, innocent. And he's going to give testimony as to conditions on death row. And that, this should be quite riveting, I, I think. Uh, so. We would like to have this discussion going on the death penalty. Now, uh, Ms. Roberts, uh, as we look at this, this topic, and uh, obviously you're a young attorney, and uh, I guess it comes up in the circle, is the death penalty, more so here in Antigua and Barbuda and the British territory, there's uh, a sentencing, and then there is a time span between appeals and all that. Tell me, what the, how does it work in Antigua? What's the law for that in Antigua and Barbuda? Because, because of some case that was uh, the, the Privy Council, or uh, the, I, I don't know where it stemmed from, yeah. Yeah. but there's some notable folks in law who decided after a certain, and I don't want to speculate like I know the details, you're the attorney, give it to me. How the, where did the law come? Where the death penalty was put on pause in Antigua and Barbuda? Yeah. Yeah, Pat and Morgan, it was a Privy Council case um, where they decided if you're spending more than five years on death row, then uh, it's, it's regarded as inhumane to be waiting that amount of time for your death as a sentence. So right now, any person who is on death row for that period of time can apply to the Privy Council to seek redress. So clear, how does it work? Because if you're saying that one should, if he's in prison for five years, but the law gives him the right to appeal, how long does an appeal take? Well, this is it. If you are on a sentence of death or you're being uh, tried for, for uh, cr a crime, for murder, which involves a death penalty, then it provides that the state should be efficient in doing so, that it should be done quickly. So including the appeals, there should be at least seven years from the time of uh, first trial to conviction when you've exhausted your appeals. So if more than seven years, it's reduced to five, including nowadays uh, appeals to non-extra uh, um, international bodies like the Inter-American Commission, uh, the Inter-American uh, Court on Human Rights, uh, then insist. You see, you have a higher scrutiny if you want to impose the death penalty. So it cannot, it must be done efficiently and quickly. That's but right. efficiently and quickly, you said seven years, and they're saying if they're on death row for five years. That's right. Because if an appeal, you know, if, if all the speed that you get and it's still seven years, you're two years over the five-year period. That's right. Then, um, by international standards, in fact, by the law, Pratt and Morgan, uh, you cannot carry out the death penalty. The death penalty must be commuted to life imprisonment or a number of years uh, as set up. So what would be the decision, though, or what is the law? Let's say a person is convicted, and of course uh, your, your, your conviction is it's hanging, mm -hmm. or by the death penalty, whatever means the state would to, to deter the end of your life. And 
how can it be done in five years? What, so how do you get to that point? If, if it cannot be done in five years, if the person does not appeal, that's yeah. how it works? If the person does not yeah, appeal. Exactly. If the person does not appeal then, of course. But yeah. Normally the person would appeal. But then and that will take you over the time limit? It would take you over the time limit. And that's what the court has said. If it does, then you cannot impose the death penalty. Of course, in some places, in the United States, you could spend 15, 20 years appealing. At the end of the appeal process, you can be hanged or, or you can have the death penalty imposed on you because there are different forms of executing a person, killing a person. Um, as you may know, we use hanging exclusively. But in some states, they, they use electrocution, um, Lethal injection. Shooting. They shoot people? They shoot people, yeah. In a number of states, they shoot people. In America? Not in America. Oh, oh um, okay. In America, it's the... Lethal injection. Lethal injection. Yeah. Um, they have hanging in some states, but, yeah. I would expect. Yeah, and electrocution. Mm. Um, but in Saudi Arabia, for instance, they still use decapitation. They cut oh. your head off. In China, they shoot. They shoot you. Or lethal injection. Um, they're, they're different for but but the standard as we as you meet on Saturday evening to dis discuss this topic what are some of the things that you think we as Antiguan should be aware of as far as the law is concerned and how this this works I think we should definitely be aware of the fact that judges are the ones who are deciding these cases and like in every system there there can be mistakes made that's why we have the appeals process but once someone's sentenced to death, there's no going back. There's no correcting that mistake. And that, I think, is one of the main issues that we have to be aware of, that we are imposing this penalty, but it's in a system that is, is naturally flawed, and I think we can all accept that it, it is. So you'd rather keep someone alive than to execute an innocent person? Yes. Exactly. Okay, and on, on, on the basis of that, as we, as we look at the law in Antigua and Barbuda and the laws around the region, uh, uh, is the law in Antigua Barbuda unison with cohesive with those in the OECS? Are we working on the same law? Oh yes, we we are working on basically the same law. Mm -hmm. We have a joint court, as you know. We we share the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. which consists of the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Um, so we're on the same basis. The case law applies. Uh, in a case, if the council decides the case in St. Vincent, for instance it would be highly persuasive, it would be applicable in, in Antigua, for instance. But then if I may just take up what uh, Sophia just said, um, the irrevocability of the death penalty is one of the reasons why uh, some, some of us think that it should end. Uh, no justice system is safe from judicial error. And, inno and innocent people are likely to be sentenced to death. And in fact, um, on Saturday at Heritage Key Hotel, 7 o'clock, uh, we will have one such testimony, one such person giving testimony. Um, I think there were 144 persons in the states who were released from death row. And this has come about because of the new DNA testing? DNA testing, yes, yeah. there's one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, people we can't, people knew evidence, uh, but DNA has been one of those. Um, so uh, the other thing, of course, is that it's just beyond the power that a state should have. The life is life. Is life. You, you can't give life. You haven't, man hasn't learned to, to give life, to make life yet. And so there should be a limit to what punishment can be meted out. And we think that the death penalty surpasses that limit. And the other thing is not uh, really deterrent. Um, this is one of the arguments used that it's going to deter people from violent crime and so on. This is not so at all. And an example in Trinidad, you might re remember the Shady Gang, they, they killed over a weekend nine prisoners. They, they had um, the Saturday, they started off with, I think, four. No, it started the, start the Friday. It started the Friday, the four, the Saturday, with I think three. They took off the Sunday. They hanged two on the Monday. Nine persons. Um, murder in Trinidad did not go down. It, it, it went up, if anything. So the, the three main arguments that they used are, one, the fact that 
um, it deters crime. Two, it's some sort of um, revenge, revenge type justice. thing, an eye for an eye, Old Testament type justice. Uh, what, what was it? Again, somebody said if you had, if you went around an eye for an eye, all of us would be blind at the end of the, <laughs> end of the, That's of the true. day. Yeah. Uh, Your Excellency, have you ever defended a, 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 a murder accused? Uh, murder? No, I've never. Um, I've prosecuted manslaughter, but um, not. You've I'm prosecuted? Not yeah, I've yeah. done prosecution. Okay. Um, okay. In some, in Trinidad, for instance, uh, not Trinidad, in Montserrat, in the BVI, the Attorney General is also the DPP. Mm -hmm. So when I was Attorney General in those countries, I had to prosecute. Um, I no, did, I you never, get, did you I get did, a guilty verdict? I, I did defend um, a murder um, in. Uh, so not defend, prosecute. I prosecuted a murder in the BVI mm -hmm. with a QC. In those days, I was a, a junior. Um, we got a conviction, but I think it was overturned. It was a retrial, and I, I think um, I'm not sure what happened on the retrial. But that was a very interesting case where a chap was working Obia and um, Obia, yeah, <laughs> and killed somebody in the process, and uh, so. But, but from where you sit, uh, Your Excellency, the fact is that uh, this lecture about the death penalty is imperative that we all go on out and be part of this uh, topic and conversation when it comes in Saturday evening. It yes. will be at the uh, uh, Heritage Key Hotel. Is there an admittance? Is it free to no, the general public? Free. Absolutely free. Do they have to register? Is there a registration nope, nope. process? We just come along. We okay. have, we're catering for 100 and if more. We'd be very happy to find some more chairs. The gentleman that you spoke of that was on death row for 17 years, is, where is he from? Uh, Puerto Rico. He's, He's from, Puerto from Puerto Rico. Rico. And um, that people should come to hear that. He was, um, he was convicted in Puerto Rico? He was convicted in Puerto Rico on death row. Mm -hmm. He was, um, uh, so he's able to tell you how inhumane uh, that is. For 17 years, imagine for 17 years living with they thought that tomorrow you'd be killed or could be killed. Um, the death hanging over your head constantly. You're seeing other people marching because they, they tend to have you pa have the persons who are going to be executed pass near you, so you know what's happening, and you have that psychological um, terror, if you like, for 17 years. I think. It's worth coming to hear that. It's so clear, you know, there's folks uh, that you hear it daily. Uh, you kill somebody, uh, the, the state should kill you. Yes. The, state, the state shouldn't be feeding you when you took a life and, and all that. Uh, and you're inviting those who say that yes. to be at this uh, uh, consultation, this meeting on Saturday night. And those who, who are against the death penalty to be there. So you want to have a wide scope uh, of views on this topic. Yeah. Uh, where do we, what would we hope to garner from this, except in exposing it to the general public? Yeah. Because, uh, and I must tell you, I sit here, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it hates to assume, but I'm assuming that you're against the death penalty. Mm -hmm. I am, because I, I can give you many reasons mm -hmm. why. It's, uh, punishment should not be revenge. And even more and more families of victims of murder are coming around to that. They don't want to see people killed, the, 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 the murderer killed. Um, everybody is redeemable. Everybody. There's, there's none of us that is not. Um, my preacher keeps telling me that Paul was a murderer. He used to murder Christians before he started to um, bring Father. people to Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, so there's always redemption. And in the death penalty, there's no redemption. It's the wrong type of punishment. So, yes, I can say uh, for sure that for many reasons I am an uh, abolitionist. Mm. In Antigua, we still have the death penalty. We have not carried it out since 1991. 91. It was the last time we actually um, executed someone in Antigua. Did that person appeal? Oh, that's a good point. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, the, the, this Pratt and uh, 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 the, this, yeah. this yes, Privy yes. Council uh, of uh, uh, decision came before or after? After. 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 Or after. Yes. And okay. we also have to keep in mind that the appeal process is not necessarily open to everyone in terms of if you may not have the funding, the finances to go all of the way, all the way to the Privy Council. So you're already.
protection of a certain member or yes. certain persons who just can't simply afford to... Do you have any dissenting yeah. views from no, your dad? I, I am <laughs> fully, fully backing him yeah. and, and our um, organization as well, Human Rights for All. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things we're trying to, to do, to uh, educate the public and create awareness for these types of issues and other um, human rights issues. So we're partnering with Greater Caribbean for Life, who's an uh, international organization that's holding this public meeting, and they're also going to Jamaica after. Um, so Human Rights for All, we are abolitionists, and we're inviting persons who are interested in, in, the, in human rights issues to contact us if they want to get involved with the organization. Uh, we are a non-profit, non-governmental organization, so... They can, anybody from the public can contact us um, to get involved if they like. How or do come they out. contact you? Uh, at Roberts & Co. Uh, okay. Our number's in the website or we're on Neva, 16 Neva Street. You can contact us. And yeah. If you'd like to get involved or come on Saturday, Dave, yeah. we welcome you. So it's all, it's yeah. all on Saturdays? On Saturday, yeah. Oh, you mean Saturday evening this at evening, Heritage Yes, School. Saturday evening. Okay, yeah. but I think it's a great thing because it became very topical in Antigua and Barbuda about certain things, especially with the robberies and the shooting and all mm -hmm. these things that are going on. Folk, folks are on a heightened sense of awareness mm -hmm. about what the law is That's and why right, should yeah. this person do this and get yeah. away with it. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I couldn't have you here, sis, so, so clear. And, and don't ask you about the prison, the, the prison in Antigua and Barbuda. We know for a fact that there's an overcrowding issue of the prison. We also know the condition of the prison. You are a human rights activist. And w what do you say? Because do we have to wait until we get 90 or $190 million to start formulate a move for a new prison or place the house the prisoners? How, how do we do something short term until we get to the financial state that we can afford such facilities? Dave, that's, that's a good point. The Prime Minister said that uh, around independence he intends to get some of the young people out of prison. What has happened, the prison is a virtual warehouse uh, for young people. I, I put it that way, they're stacked there. Uh, they're not, there's not, no program to rehabilitate them. Uh, so. What we can do, for instance, is to ease the pressure by easing some of these. Some of these people should not be in prison. We have just, uh, the government has just um, put forward legislation which gives alternate punishment to prison. So, uh, so that's the first thing. We need to ease the pressure of numbers. We have too many people in the prison. And then we need to have the young people, have the people in prison do something, uh, for instance, there must be anger management programs. Um, I know they've attempted this, but you need more of this because a lot of the violence you hear about, there's no anger management uh, program in the prison. Um, then we need other rehabilitating programs, some skills, um, basic skills, uh, motor mechanic, tailoring. These used to be done at one time. I, I think just keeping people secure and keep, keeping people from each other's throat these things are not existing in, existent anymore. So we need to bring back programs, give the prisoners things to do that will rehabilitate them and keep them busy rather than have a little school. There should, no person coming out of prison should be, not be able to read and write, for instance. So we need other literacy in the prison. Um, so these are the things we can do. It will take some money, but I think people can volunteer, um, and there are people who volunteer, churches and what have you. Uh, but we need a program, a structured program in the prison. And there's another issue, and I discovered that here on Good Morning Antigua Barbuda. We, we took the environment vision as they look at that space at the Botanical Garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, because of the housing of pigs and a prisoner it is stifling them from accessing funds. Uh, so clear, you're, you're, uh, the human rights aspect, pigs and one prison is preventing them from garnering finance mm -hmm. to, to elevate the status of, of that botanical garden and for all the positive things that they need to do. Uh, with your influencer, I mean, and, and human rights again, mm -hmm. 20 pigs and a, and, and a farm is stopping a project. Uh, what that's do we a, do? Yeah. That's very interesting. That center used to be our dojo. <laughs> and, yeah. and we had spent a lot of money and it was um, commanded by, by the government so many years ago uh, to provide 
uh, um, it used to be a remand center, uh, but now I gather it's part of the prison system. Um, that seems to be a matter of, of governance. Some, someone, whoever is in charge, should be able to take up different ministries, should be able to take that in hand, um, move the prison or that aspect of the prison from the botanical gardens, uh, because that's a gem, the botanical garden, the, the natural um, crater and so on. It's, it's really a gem. And wasn't it really meant to be a temporary thing? Originally? It was It was supposed to be temporary. Yeah. I think there was a fire or something, yeah. and they used it temporarily, mm -hmm. but you know, temporary became permanent. Well, the temporary is only one prisoner and yeah. 20, uh, 20 oh, plus yeah. pigs, I, I think, or 30 yeah. pigs, something like that. No, so. I would have thought that's uh, something that should be addressed and can be addressed. Yes. Well, again, here's hoping that Antigans and Barbudans will come on out in the topic of the death penalty, a public lecture. And, of course, it comes up this coming Saturday at the Heritage Co Hotel. What time frame did uh, you get? 7 o'clock. 7, 7 p.m. It's absolutely free. And they're catering for 100 or more. The more comes, the extra chairs they'll bring out. Yes. Uh, so, clear again, we want to say congratulations to you also on the elevation of, of course, the Deputy Governor of Antigua and Barbuda. And we wish you well and all the success in the world. And, of course, continue your human human rights struggle and to, to make our country and the, co the world a better place to live in. Uh, Ms. Roberts, again, here's hoping that, of course, uh, this Saturday you'll be pleased with the turnout and that uh, Antiguans and Barbuda will garner more information as to help guide us mentally in our thought process towards this death penalty issue. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you. For Enjoy having the us. rest of your week, guys. And, of course, always a pleasure to be in your company. It's Thank good morning, Antigua and Barbuda. Stay with us. We've got more on this Tuesday morning.